three, two, one. What is up, everybody? Uh, before we kickstart the first interview of the Cash Combos podcast, um, I just want to take a quick second to thank everyone for listening to the first episode um, with Cole and I. We're just getting started and we got a lot of great interviews lined up um, and a lot of good content planned. So again, thank you for the support. If you haven't seen, we're happy to announce that we're now available on every major podcasting streaming platform. So that's Google, that's Spotify, that's Apple. Um, so if you're tired of watching us or just killing your data on YouTube, uh, just make sure you subscribe to one of those podcasts. So with all that being said and with all that housekeeping out of the way, um, I want to introduce the first guest of our series, the first guest of 2020. She's a friend of mine. We've known each other for five, six years, maybe even more. More. Probably right? like eight. Almost ten, yeah, maybe even ten. Decade? Maybe. A long Shoot, time. We're getting old. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's responsible for making at least I would say half the men in Calgary look clean and dapper for their weddings or for work. She's the mother of a beautiful child, Remington. Um, she's the owner of multiple businesses, Ensemble Style, Atelier by Ensemble, made the label. Please give it up for Lauren Larson. <laughs> Ooh. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, welcome. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Um, so... We were just talking about this before, but like I said to you, the point of this is try, just to try and get to know you a little bit more and, and try to learn, I guess, your story and learn about how you became an entrepreneur. Um, but before we do that, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Who is Lauren? Well, you just touched on the main things, I would say. I have a son named Remington. I have three businesses and... I have addiction for shopping, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. I love shopping, but not for myself, for other people. So, And, and tell us about these businesses. What, what are they all and what do they all do? Um, Ensemble Style is a uh, personal styling company. I do do some production work as well, which includes um, fashion shows, commercial stuff, uh, I just actually did the rebrand for World Health Club, which is now called uh, Gym, Mo movement. Gym movement. movement. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, you worked on that. Yeah, I did I the no styling idea. for that. That's so incredible. the billboards around the city. Um, yeah, I did I the think wardrobe. One literally just outside here. Really? As you're driving on McLeod. Oh, okay. Because there's, there's one right, right yeah, on the corner. Yeah, I've here. been seeing them all over the place. So that's that incredible. that cool. They did like a really cool revamp. Yeah. Um, so I worked on that. But the main thing I do with that company is I help people, mainly men, but I do work with women as well. I help them dress better. Yeah. So I go into their closets, I look at what they have, and then I take into consideration what they have and go to the mall and fill in the gaps and shop for them. Right. Yeah. Knowing, knowing that about you, I spent an extra amount of time picking up my wardrobe today just oh, to like make you? sure I was like, <laughs> is it going to look clean? And then I think I just ended up dressing how I normally dress. So. Well, you look very clean. I, you look nice. It's, it's funny so, you say that because as I was <laughs> driving in, I was like, ah, oh, shit, I'm just wearing, I'm just super casual right now. <laughs> just not done up. Lauren's going to judge me. I like it though. Is is that Raining Champ, that jacket? Uh, Raining Champ sweater, Lululemon jacket. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very nice. I just try to wear Lulu as much as possible since we now own our company and don't have to dress up for anyone. It's... Why not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Keep, keep we, it cash. Yeah, we hey? keep it cash <laughs> in the office. <laughs> pretty possible. <laughs> and then the other two companies? Oh, right. Um, so Atelier is a custom suiting company, which came about because I just could not find suits for my clients off the rack. Right. It was a nightmare. Um, as you can imagine, nobody, like, nobody fits off the rack. Yeah. Everything needs to be adjusted. And it got really frustrating for me when I would buy a suit for a client from, you know, a high-end men's store and it wouldn't fit. And so we'd need to get tailors involved and there'd be so much back and forth. And then at the end of the day, maybe he had a suit that fit, but it wasn't how it should fit, right. you know, if it was actually made for him. So right. it wasn't the experience. That yeah, it wasn't, for it wasn't a good experience. It was a lot of back and forth, a lot of like, okay, here's the suit, the tailors finish altering it, but it still needed more alteration. So not only was I frustrated, the client was ultimately frustrated. And at the end of the day, the suit 
cost way too much money. So, and that's what's what's super interesting too is because so that's the one I guess I'm the most familiar with. Yeah, um, I've wor- you've worked uh, we've worked together on a bunch of suits and just sports coats. And yeah, yeah, lots and over the over the years, but. I, I, I very much feel that as a problem. It, like, no matter where you go to buy any piece of dress clothing, specifically, it'll fit one component of a yeah. person's body, but yeah. it will just, you compromise everywhere else. Yeah, like it'll fit your neck, but not your sleeves or your right. body. Exactly. Yeah. And then on top of that, one of the best things that, for at least for me with that, when I work with you on, on like my suiting needs is just the experience of just getting to get your opinion and, and yeah. whatnot. I think that that's also very unique about what you offer is, is just your personal style and just the, the experience is way better than any other place. Cause I've oh, gone to, you. I've gone to all of them to yeah. get custom suits and it's just never the same. That's why. Oh, well, thank you. I'm back yeah. I think it's, year. it's different having like a female's perspective on it because I wouldn't say, and from my experience shopping for men, it's mostly men right. who are working at these stores for sure. that you have to deal with. So, and not that that's a bad thing. It's just different. No. I guess if you want something new. Yeah. No, and <clears throat> I feel like the feedback loop is different at some of those places. I, I also got to work with you on a, on a suit, but I've also had an experience, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> well, where they take your measurements, yeah. they order you a suit, and then they kind of just lock down the measurements. Be like, okay, you can come and just like order another suit online and you can, we'll just, plug in these measurements yeah. without them actually coming in like really taking a, a look at the suit after the fact with yeah. you and making sure that those measurements were were correct so yeah so exactly. a little bit better of experience to really get one the female's perspective just because generally they probably know better of what's gonna look good yeah but then also that like care and attention yeah really for helps. sure and from my experience with other because I did do the custom route with some of my clients and that too was a bad experience, which really solidified that I had to do this. Um, but they don't actually take that many measurements. They take maybe like, I don't know, eight yeah. and I take about 20. Yeah. So, and yeah. my stuff is cut by hand. It's 80% handmade and my fabrics are all from Italy. So right. yeah, so it's good. But so, but how do you get connected? Like how did you get connected uh, with the, so like the Italian um, scene? So technically I bought the com- I bought the connections essentially. Right. Okay. Yeah, so they were already solidified, they were already established and I had the opportunity to buy them. Right. So it was quite easy for me um on that front and my tailor actually deals with a lot of the connections with the suppliers and the fabric manufacturers and the mills so i actually don't have to get too involved in that yeah yeah but so that's also um a pretty crazy uh almost start because so talk about that a little bit talk about how you start because this is the this was the company that you started first right uh no ensemble the personal styling was first and then this came about afterwards because i was so frustrated with my suit shopping experiences that I had tried everything that I could have tried at that time I had tried I even had one of my clients who lives in um, New York City him and I did a custom suit made in Boston and we went through that whole experience it ended up costing him $10,000 $10,000 US, <laughs> US and it really wasn't that good. So yeah. I had tried literally everything. And then I met this guy, I won't say his name. Um, he's no longer in the business, but I met a guy here in Calgary who had custom suits and who had tailors who made custom suits for him. And when I saw his custom suits, I was like, oh my goodness, these are the nicest. Like there's something so different about these than anything I've ever seen before. And you need to make all the suits for my clients. And he was ultimately who I ended up buying the business off of. Right. Yeah. So now he's no longer in the picture at all. He actually is no longer in Calgary. Okay. Um, But yeah, 
that's that's how it all happened. It was pretty crazy. Kind of a lucky coincidence. It was lucky. It was terrifying lucky. at the time. But, yeah. you know, everybody who owns a business or who has owned a business knows that there will be times that you're just like, how am I going to do this? This is terrifying. And it's a possibility that I could lose everything in this single moment, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, it's, it's incredible that you're touching on that. How, how did, how did you navigate through that at the time? Uh, I just trusted my gut, honestly. Yeah. I spoke to uh, my tailor on the phone and the way he spoke to me, I just knew that he, that it was right. Like I just knew it yeah. and I trusted him and I really, like I could have lost everything, but I just trusted him and it worked out. It was the best decision I ever made because he is like a gem. He right. is a, like an incredible human being. So. And do you think you would have started, like, do, did you, do you have that? kind of entrepreneurial DNA? Do you think you yes. would have started the company no matter what? You would have eventually got it. I this would point? have eventually, pro yes, I would say. And I don't know if it would look exactly the way it looks. Sure. I, it probably, to be honest, without everything already being in place, it probably would have taken me a lot longer. And a, I would have had to go through a lot more trial and error with other not so good tailors. Yeah. Um, but yes, I would say I definitely have the entrepreneurial DNA. Yeah. People ask me all the time, like, I guess for advice. And they'll say, you know, I don't like my job. I, I'd like to be doing something else. I think I would like to work for myself. And when I ask them what they want to do or what their passion is, a lot of the times they have no idea. Right. And the I think that I want to start something is not something that I ever thought, like I knew, Crazy. I knew from the beginning, like I yeah. could, I can't work for somebody. I'm pretty sure like I, it, it just wouldn't last. Like I'd be fired or I'd quit within like days. Yeah. <laughs> so that is, and that, that is really interesting. On Adrian, and I had this discussion. We've had it many times that he's of the same cut from the same cloth. I yeah. was he's like, I just knew I want to start a business. Yeah. And I was like, why, how, like did like, your parents entrepreneurs like did they inject that into you like or is just how did that come I about? think you're either born I think it's something <clears throat> honestly if you're like if you feel the way that Adrian and I do about it you're just born with it yeah I wouldn't say I was necessarily like my dad was an entrepreneur is uh, I guess is an entrepreneur but I wouldn't say that that's why I am yeah I don't think he had any influence on my decisions I don't think mm. would you say your parents did I think I think it was a bit of the opposite for me my parents so I I, I talked about this story fairly often but my parents are immigrants right they came yeah. from the Philippines and they came here with, with the intent to survive right? yeah yeah and in my mind it was a waste to give up what they sacrificed to come here for yeah. me to just stick with the status quo yeah and to just to not push myself. Yeah. And in my mind, pushing myself is to try and grow and start my own thing. And that's yeah. always been my mindset. So it wasn't necessarily that they were entrepreneurs and, um, but they're they hustlers, me. but yeah, exactly. And they, they're risk takers, obviously. For sure. So. And I mean, that's probably the craziest risk that you can ever take is just leaving a country to start a new life. Were you, where you have did no they have idea. you at that point? No, oh, I okay. was, uh, they came here five years before I was born. So, okay. but then he did go back and live in the Philippines for a year. If you hear the accent at all, it's just, yeah. <laughs> it's so my strong. Cousin, my cousins still make fun of me. And <laughs> it's annoying. Um, but yeah, no, I mean the, that whole, so we went to, we went to university together Yeah. and I think that even from, it was kind of a loaded question when I asked it, but I've always, even when we have our own talks, it's, I've always felt that same like entrepreneurial uh, vibe from you yeah, is that it's, it's almost like you're always thinking about new ideas, thinking yeah. about cool things or thinking about problems to solve yeah, and then going out there and actually doing and, and making that yeah. change. Yeah. I think that you're right for sure, because I think of problems that aren't even in my 
realm of work, right. you know, like I think of how to solve other things yeah. as well. Obviously when you're surrounded by something, the work stuff is what you think about more often, but, um, yeah, I don't know. And I think there's also something to be said about people who think for too long. Like there, I've met people in the past that they won't launch anything until it's perfect. Right. And there will never be, in my opinion, things aren't perfect before yeah. you actually do it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you have to really work through the problems. And in order to work through the problems, you have to be actually doing the thing that you want to do. Um, so there's a lot of people who think too much and they don't actually ever get to the point of launching or starting because they're just fixated on perfection, which. Yeah. And, and that reminds me of a quote. I, I forget who said it, but someone said something along the lines of perfection is the greatest hindrance to progress. Yeah. So if you just, like you're saying, if you spend too much time focusing on perk, unperfect you get nowhere because yeah. you're just thinking about that rather than yeah. just going out and doing yeah exactly um which i think that is something that both cole and i maybe suffered a little bit from mm -hmm. um to be honest with you and, and even like i said i've known you for for all this time and we've talked about some of the different things that i wanted to work on and it took me a little bit to um i guess take the leap yeah, it's but scary at first. For sure. But it's people like you, it's it's people, other entrepreneurs that I know that, quite frankly, it's, it's extremely inspiring to see you go and, especially since we went to university together, yeah. and then right after that, I think, did you have a job yeah, right after? Yeah, I did, like, But yeah. it, very briefly, right? And uh, then, It was for about two years, but it right. felt like it... Was a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it did feel like a hundred. But when I look back, it felt like it was like a lifetime like right. like a go like I don't even really remember I met some great people at that company but I barely remember it feels like it just flew by like it was never meant for me it re you know? reinforced that you couldn't work for someone yes exactly yeah <laughs> that's amazing and then so we didn't touch about your last company the newest oh, company the newest company okay so uh made is custom bridesmaid dresses um and by custom I mean I should say they're tr uh, try sizing essentially. Okay. So that came because I do a lot of suits for groomsmen, as you know, and I've, I'm married and I've been a bridesmaid a number of times and I've learned over my experiences that there's not a whole lot available in Canada when it comes to bridesmaid dresses. Yeah, Like we have a lot of options online and we have, a few options in store here, but the problem with in store is it's it's very, very expensive. Like I'm talking, I mean, for a bridesmaid dress, anything over $600, in my opinion, is a lot for one-time use. Like it's just, my suits are more expensive than that, but the intention is to have them for 10 plus years, you know, and get to wear them all the time. A bridesmaid dress is not the same. So there's a lot of expensive options in store, and then there's a lot of cheap options online. But the problem with online is you're taking a huge risk. Firstly, you have no idea how this thing's going to fit you. Half the size, or half the time, it's either Australian or UK sizing. And right. that doesn't, they obviously have size charts and stuff, but it doesn't directly relate to what we're used to buying. Yeah. Um, and then in addition to that, we're stuck with paying duties, which typically are 20%. And then we don't know if the dress is going to fit. So once it gets here, most likely there's expensive alterations on top of it, if it's even close to fitting you. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, even a $200 dress, oh, and they're usually in US currency as well. So right. A hundred and fifty dollar, two hundred dollar U.S. dress ends up costing six hundred dollars at the end of the day. So, Ridiculous. so I started Made, um, which is affordable bridesmaid dresses. I've designed, I think, twelve styles now, and I just launched eight more colors. So there's three different collections of eight colors that I have available, wow. um, and the intention is just to try to simplify that process. And that company is still, obviously it's new. I launched it last year. So it's still 
a work in progress. I'm still working through the kinks with that. Things that I never knew I'm learning <laughs> and trying to fix as I go, but I'm hoping that that will solve the bridesmaid issue. Is it difficult going from, I, I think, primarily men's fashion and then entering the world, I, I, although you're a female, right? But yeah. how, how was that transition? Was um, it easy or...? Uh, no, <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, my preference is still suiting, and it always will be. Suits are so technical. They, they're they black and white. They have to be a certain way, and there's there's many wrong ways to make a suit, but there's only, like, one right way to make a suit. So it's very oh. easy to be just once you have it dialed in and nailed down, it's – it's just so technical. It's black and white, and I love it. Whereas dresses and female body types in particular are so, it's it's such a gray area. There's so many things to consider, and, you know, it's just, it's just not nearly as black and white as men's wear. And I don't know. I, d I just, it's, it's a very, very challenging thing for me to make that switch yeah. um but i also have amazing bridal stores that carry my line so i actually don't deal anymore with the bridesmaids directly unless it's like a like a special circumstance i see yeah so they deal a lot with that because they're trained they know how to deal with those situations and they know female bodies they know that's what they do so right. I tend to just let them handle it. <laughs> that makes sense. Honestly, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess the, it, it's crazy that you've started all these companies and they all are seemingly successful. Yeah. And how do you navigate your time between all of these? How does that, uh, how does that look? <laughs> It's quite difficult, especially I have a two-year-old, so it's exactly yeah, and a mom. On yeah, top of so that. I would say that's my biggest job. Um, any mom listening listening to this knows that like being a mom is the most difficult job you will ever have. If you can be a mom and like not even kill it, because moms always feel like they could do better no matter what, even if they seemingly are killing it at being a mom. <laughs> um, if you can do it and like keep a tiny human alive, yeah, then you can start any company. I promise you, you can. <laughs> <laughs> it is like the hardest thing is to be a mom. So that's my, my biggest job, I would say. Yeah. And the other three, to be honest, I love them so much that they don't really feel like work to me and I think that's that's the main reason why spending time on them doesn't it doesn't feel like a chore and it doesn't feel like something I need to like carve out in my day to do yeah there definitely are aspects of it like bookkeeping for example sure. that you're not thrilled about but yeah. Especially because you have to do it times three. Yeah, exactly. But uh, once you have all of the the programs and everything in place, like the platforms that manage your things, it actually becomes quite easy to do three. Yeah. Just because it's all the same, just yeah. over and over. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I say I stay up a lot at night. <laughs> yeah. Um, I work with different time zones. Like my dresses are... Um, made in Asia. So yeah. I'm working with time zones, which are not convenient at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, they get to work when we're going to bed. So you're up quite late, usually, but it's all fun. It, it all just gets done. And it's fun. So that's awesome. Yeah, I, I think Yeah, like you said, I think one of the most impressive things is that you're doing all of this as a mom, right as a new ish couple year two you said two year old yeah yeah um mom and and I, I did want to talk about that a little bit in the sense of do you think as an entrepreneur who has more control of your time do you think that helps you yeah. as as a mom 
because I think that when you when you see people just you know working downtown and whatnot, they're kind of restrained by yeah. what they ha- uh, their nine to five job. Yeah, right? exactly. Do you think that being an entrepreneur gives you a little bit more flexibility, or is it just a little bit even? It's even more complicated to navigate. Um. Yes, it gives you so much more flexibility in the sense that you don't have to make that daycare drop off time or you know, you don't have to be at an office until 5 p.m. You can, if something comes up or you have an appointment for your son or or your daughter, um, you can do those kinds of things and work your schedule around it. Um, It does get a little bit complicated when you're getting, like, say, the phone rings and it's a magazine wanting to talk to you about something and your son is screaming in the background. There's really not much you can do about that because you know you have to you have to make a decision like do i do i deal like it's just impossible to manage so there are certain things that yes you definitely have more flexibility especially in parenting but when it comes to your business it, it there are times that it can suffer for sure if you're not if you don't have help yeah or if you don't manage it correctly slash get everything crammed into nap times yeah (laughs) which are like one to two hours if you're lucky (laughs) how's your how's your stress tolerance uh (laughs) pretty good i would say i don't know i tend to be of the mindset now that like if you can't control it what is the point of stressing about it you know sure like if you can't control or if If the outcome is not within your control, then what is the point of getting worked up about it? Yeah. And that maybe took, maybe I only came to that conclusion after becoming a mom. I don't know. (laughs) But I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) It it seemed like your priorities, obviously, you had a lot to juggle before that. Yeah. And then you have something that comes in that's ultimately more important than any of it. Yeah. And so then to like emphasize on that probably brings clarity as well. And then yeah, it makes does. it easier to then navigate some of the business ventures. Yeah. Yep. And it just, it makes things seem um, like it's not the end of the world, you know? Right. But I feel like that comes to over time. Every time you deal with an event that seems like the end of the world at the time, And then you work through it and you get over it. The next event that feels like the end of the world, you kind of know it isn't, you know? So it's, it's a little bit easier to manage each one of those as you, right. As you go through them all. (laughs) Have have you ever had it where you've missed like a wedding though? No, 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 no. I have never knock on this wood table right here, but, um, (laughs) that would be stressful. Yeah. I have had some crazy situations happen. Um, For example, this summer, actually, two crazy things happened. One guy came to me five days before his wedding, or maybe it was it was between seven and five, less than less than a full week. Um, He had gone to another suit person, and they just forgot to order to place his order and he had been following up with them for two or three months and I won't name names but I I have worked this is one of the companies that really solidified that I need to do this on my own because it was just brutal yeah Yeah. (laughs) but um they just forgot and he came to me and was like I don't know if you can help me, but he was not an off the rack size. Most people aren't, but like he really wasn't. Right. And I called my tailor and I was like, can we make a, can you have a suit here in five days? And he was like, uh, yeah, I'll send, I'll ship it out on Monday. And it was here in time and it fit him. And it like, I don't know how it worked out, but we didn't need to do any alterations. It was pretty crazy. But it was it was funny too because so <laughs> I think I was get, I was going to talk about this story because I think I was getting measured for a suit or something. Yeah, that at was at that around, same time. Yeah. So she was telling me about this, and I was 
just freaking out. I was like, how is this guy getting married in five days with yeah. no suit? Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Like, and I think he was to, like six foot seven too. Like oh, he wow. was yeah, like. Just a monster. Big there's no mm-hmm. way, there's yeah. no way he's going to. Morse anywhere, or anywhere really. Anywhere. Like Singer, <laughs> Rosen, yeah. It's, that's. Just the thing with that is like, that guy's going to be stressed. And you're going to have a lot of people stressing about their particular things. Yeah. And that'd be easy for them to, you know, Put inject that, that stress into oh, you. Oh, for sure. And, and they do to, all the time. But um, that becomes easier to manage because I'm so confident in my tailor and my process that unless it's something completely outside of my control, like a DHL flight delay, yeah. for example, sure. which also happened this mm. summer, um, I just I just know that it will happen. Like there's, my tailor has never let me down and ultimately I have never let somebody down because of it. So even when people stress to me, I just know it's going to be okay. So right. maybe that eases the situation a little bit, but... Yeah. But yeah, it, it can get crazy for sure, especially I, I when it's it. weddings, because like that is, that's not thing. a yeah. day that can change. <laughs> if it's yeah. somebody's like, you know, I work with a lot of business guys too. And if he say has to be on a flight to Toronto on Tuesday because he has a presentation on Friday and he wants a suit before he leaves, if for whatever reason, DHL flight delay anything happens along the way I can always ship the suit to him and we can make it happen yeah like a wedding it's like if the wedding is on Saturday like you better have the suit finished for sure by Friday because nobody's doing anything on Saturday including DHL yeah (laughs) yeah I mean a wedding is a stressful time in and of itself right and I can't even imagine the amount of stress of I don't even have anything to wear you know, oh, I know, I know. That's ridiculous. To yeah, me. but yeah, we can. We, I don't know. We always make it happen. This year, I had a, a wedding guest. It was a suit for a wedding guest, but there was a DHL flight delay, and um, this guy was leaving to go to Montana on Friday, and the DHL plane didn't make it here until Friday. <laughs> But I thought that he wasn't going to have a suit. So what I did, he was kind of the same measurements-ish as my husband. So I took (laughs) one of my husband's suits that was blue. His suit that he had ordered was blue. It wasn't the same fabric or color even. But I took one of my husband's suits and I altered it to fit this guy so that he, at least if the DHL flight didn't arrive he had something to wear to this wedding and he took that one thank god the dhl flight arrived um and i was able to send his suit with another guest of the wedding down to montana on saturday morning (laughs) for him to wear so he actually ended up wearing his own suit but i also had to alter my husband and he never got that suit back my husband? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. He <laughs> gave it back to me, and he delivered me a bottle of wine. Oh, this score. Christmas, going on, so. going above and beyond. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. that's, the, that's a level of that's a level of customer service or customer experience that we were talking about earlier. It's there's no way that just one of these, uh, you know, like yeah. these like stores go above and beyond like like you no. have. You know, like that's yeah. that's that's not a story that you would ever hear. It's just yeah. oh, we forgot it. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, get it to you as soon as we and can. I, I don't know how you sleep at night, but I guess when it's your own business, like a lot, of, a lot of these people just work for these stores, right? Yeah. Like when it's your own thing and it's your passion. Yeah, it's also your reputation no on the line. Yeah, there's just no way I could just let it slide. Let that happen. Like yeah. I, I, I would have drove to Montana myself if if this wedding guest wasn't going. You know, <laughs> for sure yeah. I would have. Yeah, but. <clears throat> And have, um, you, have you always had this this passion for fashion? Is is that something that you think that you've? Is this like the space that you would always have ended up in? No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I think um, I don't think I have a passion for fashion per se, and that's very strange for especially a stylist to say. But I really enjoy. Uh, 
helping people and making things better. Okay. And it's the same for like when I do interiors too. Like I've worked on a few interior decorating projects as well. I wouldn't say I have, I just, I love seeing the before and after and the, the impact that that has on the person or whatever it is I'm doing. So for example, Ensemble, my personal styling company, I love that. And I think I am able to do well with that because I just truly care about helping the person. And I really like getting to know my clients and making sure that whatever they end up in works perfectly for them and will um, in some way make their life better. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and it, it's funny you, you position it like that because uh, a friend of mine went to you for, for uh, personal shopping. Yeah. And... I've known I've known him for 20 25 years right but the the level of confidence that he just emits just just yeah. innately by by wearing clothes that actually fit yeah. or or by just f- feeling confident because he knows almost I don't know about Cole but like me when I buy clothes I don't necessarily have the validation that this is going to look good. Yeah, and you're then I don't know. I'm just, it's, I'm not a big shopper. So it's just, I hope it looks good. And I think it does, but I don't know. I don't have somebody telling me that. Yeah. But if, if, so our, this friend of mine, when, he, when you worked with him, he came into the next couple of weeks of work, just puff yeah, chest, beaming. like walking around. Yeah. And, yeah. And like, there was like, I was like, there's like a glow around yeah. you, you know? But it was also like a night and day, like his, his appearance and just the, clothes that he was wearing yeah. yeah was nicer a lot nicer and cleaner and, it didn't, and crisper it wasn't firm. even like we did anything crazy either i think with him and i know who you're talking about i think we just got him clothes that fit exactly. honestly like it was, it was more fit and it wasn't even it, yeah. it was very simple it was more like a capsule wardrobe if you could call it that just basics that can be paired easily functional you know but it, I, I think the main difference was that it fit him yeah because he wasn't used to buying things that fit <laughs> right yeah that I, and I am interested in the process we, we talked a little bit about uh ensemble the, the personal shopping yeah company at the start but what does that process look like like when when you have a new client um how does it go from start to to say finish with that Um, so I always meet them first and typically it's just for coffee within five minutes of meeting somebody. I know exactly what they should be wearing. Like it's weird to say, but I don't need them to tell me, um, what they want. Like I don't need them to say, I want blue shirts, black shirts, and you know, yeah. these color of jeans and shoes. I know exactly what they will be comfortable in and what will work for them right away. Do you, um, and do you think that's, again, from experience, or that's just like intuition, that's just uh, your way of I'd looking at things that a it kind bit of slides into place? Both, for sure. Yeah. Like experience, yes, I've been doing this now for, I, don't, I would say, eight years yeah, probably. I started this company when I was working at my very first job out of university. And in the time, like before I left to do it full time, I had already developed my business in Calgary and Vancouver, and I was flying to New York once a month. Um, So I, I worked with a lot of people over the years. And I think now it's just, there's certain personalities, there's certain ways people dress um I know when I can push the limits and get somebody into something more trendy and I don't really ever like to use that word because trends are so fleeting and guys especially women tend to follow trends men just want something that lasts until it wears out and will look (laughs) good for the whole time um so so I don't typically follow trends but I know when I meet with a client who will be able to push it a little bit um, and I know when somebody is so conservative that even like a tapered jean would be 
like I will probably have to convince him that a tapered jean is a good thing, you know? Right. And do, you, yeah. do you ever have to convince people? Because yeah, of course. It, 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 <laughs> yeah. That makes so much sense to me that we as guys don't really know what we want. So yeah. it's hard to ask us what we want. So I'm, it's it's really, if it was me, anything you gave me, I'd probably just wear it because I'm like. Yeah, yeah but yeah. you'd be so easy. Like you're, you're not, I don't, you're not my typical client, yeah. I wouldn't say. Um, Adrian is very well dressed. You can't see him, but. <laughs> yeah, unless you watch this on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Cole, on the other hand, though, could you <laughs> some help? No, Cole's good too. But mo I would say most of my clients are um, a little bit more. They need more help than you do. Sure. Mm. And so sometimes, yes, I have to convince them. Some of these guys have never worn anything slimmer than a boot cut jean. Right. Like some of these guys are cowboys from, you know, the, s the from farm. Texas. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> like you never know. Yeah. Um, and so, but there's ways to, a lot of people when they think of like a slimmer jean, especially guys who are not used to it, they immediately are like, oh, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a hipster in skinny jeans. Like pretty, they, pretty boy. That's like the main thing that they go to. And I know this already because I've been working with them for so long. Um, but there's ways. Like you buy a jean that's a lot softer, that has a lot of stretch. Right. So that when they put it on, they they're still very much. comfortable. But yeah. they're, then they look in the mirror, they're like, wow, this is a lot slimmer than I'm used to, but it's so comfortable. Yeah. You know, so there's ways of, but, but I do usually have to convince. Yeah, because I, I assume you also get like some st stubborn people some as well. Pushback, like, because yeah. like I might come in and be like, "Hey, I want a new outfit like entirely, but I want to keep this one piece." Like, I have these beautiful mustard yellow, like French's mustard <laughs> yellow <laughs> pants that I must have. Can you build an outfit around it? Like, would you be like, like work with it, or be like, yeah, try to, it, I would work with yeah. it if they were, if they were. Actually, if you love them that much, and to be honest, I've never had anybody give me a challenge like that. Um, I've had challenges, but not like so something or hideous extreme. that they yeah. need to have. Um, but I would, I would definitely like I'd taper them for you, and I would make something work for sure. Right. If you love them that much, I'd make it work. Right. Um, but yeah, I I do have stubborn people like and. People who, who I think something is so easy to wear, you know, like something just that I think every man should have in his wardrobe. And then I have a guy who I think it would work for, but he just will not. He can't come around to it at right. that moment. Yeah. And so, yeah. And sometimes I can't convince them, but I know in my mind, come eventually, like as we go through the process, maybe next year, yeah. maybe the year after, as they start to get compliments on their new style, maybe that's what it takes for them to like take the next step. And I know that. And so. I think that that's exactly it, right? It's, I think you're instilling this confidence that maybe they are not used to or they've never had before. Yeah, that's so the best time, part of my job. Yeah, which is crazy to yeah. think that like there are people that you make more confident. Yeah. You know? it's and, so and, and we saw, yeah. we saw it because Cole, we're, Cole, we worked with this guy, both Cole and I, Yeah, and it was visible. The level of oh, confidence. Oh, that makes me so happy. Had. Yeah. It was insane. Like he got a little cocky too, like talking shit to me. And I'm like, what? Like, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> You're What's like, no, yeah. I'm the one. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. No, I've had like, I've worked with one guy in particular. He is like, Actually, one of my oldest clients, he was one of my very first clients way back in the day. He doesn't live in Calgary anymore. Um, and he was recently divorced when I started working with him. He had like no confidence, but handsome dude, like had all the potential in the world, but just no confidence and his clothes didn't fit him. Okay. And I shopped for him. And between the time that I kind of perfect or helped perfect his wardrobe to now he's gotten remarried to like a total babe yeah um he got his dream job he was moved to the u.s he's like an executive at a very large company um and honestly i think he's obviously smart and handsome to begin with so i didn't help with that but like the confidence i think really helped get him to where he is very quickly. For sure. Um, 
and he's amazing. He still sees me once a year, whether I fly down there or yeah. he comes back here. Like it's it's wonderful. And I know his entire wardrobe. He will not buy anything yeah. without well, like I, I buy everything yeah, yeah. for him. So I know every single thing he has, which is really great. <laughs> <laughs> is that would you say that that is what you're maybe most proud of or what 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 would you say you're most proud of in these entrepreneurial ventures? Uh yeah, I mean, I think helping people is my main thing, whether it's helping somebody dress better or seeing somebody's face when they put on a suit for the first time that was cut for them. Yeah. Like it's pretty incredible to get to witness that and just know that like that wouldn't happen if this company wasn't in place. Yeah. So it's pretty cool to like see that. Um, and even fixing, well, attempting to fix the problem with the bridesmaid dress thing too, like just solving problems and helping people is my main thing, I would say. Um, and definitely what I'm most proud of with all three yeah. businesses. That's amazing. That does seem mm -hmm. to be the, uh, the recurring undertone to all of your businesses is that yeah. you're just helping people out, which is which is incredible. Yeah, I really love it. I And that's why when people ask me, they're like, oh, you must have a massive closet and you must love fashion. I honestly don't. Like if I could wear black, all black yeah. every day, and I, I mean, if I could, I pretty much do wear <laughs> yeah, black yeah. every day because isn't wasn't it Steve Jobs who was like, I just don't want to think about yeah. what I'm going to wear so I'm just gonna wear the same thing every day I don't go to his extreme where I literally wear the same thing every day yeah. but I think his was you only have a certain amount of decisions in a day yeah and so if you have to think about like matching clothes and whatnot you're wasting decisions that are useless no, uh, in I the morning I think yeah. it was just a turtleneck a day keeps a doctor away yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that true. as well a little bit of that I mean I do yeah. love a good turtleneck but I would wear black every day because of that. Like it takes the decision yeah. but, out but and you know that it looks good. That's what's really interesting. Cause I really identify with those. I don't like thinking about what I'm wearing. Like I love yeah. being able to get up and put on clothes and I generally have some stuff that I can throw together. But if you have the confidence, if you worked with ensemble to get your clothing line picked up so that you can truly do that without yeah. thinking about it and have a bunch of outfits that just go together. Yeah. That is like one thing off your mind that you don't have to think about. Yeah, and you know Each it fits, day. you know it looks good. Yeah. And everything, I, I shop so that guys have versatility and so that they don't have to think. Like, I don't buy outfits. I buy, like, everything can go with everything, and it's right. very simple, and you don't really have to think about it. I have had people in the past who still ask me to make, like, lookbooks for them, which I do. Like, I'll you know, take photos of outfits so that they really know exactly what goes together. But oh, for like the most individual part, individual client will ask for a lookbook. Mm -hmm. Oh, but for the most part, it's they know that everything goes together. I've already told them that and I'm not on commission. So like it doesn't matter. I'm not selling you on something. Right. That's the other thing. When guys go to a store, I feel like yeah. they're not sure if they're being sold. And I even feel that way when yeah. I go shopping. I'm like I, I like I know this doesn't look good on me. You're telling me it does. And now I don't trust you yeah. with anything, wow, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there's that component as well. It just there's never any pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Um so what's next? What 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 do you foresee the next oh. few years looking like for, for these these companies or just even you? Like is there is there other ventures that you want to dig into? Yeah, custom shoes. Oh yeah, I actually have been it's on the back burner for sure, but I I think custom shoes are something that we could incorporate for sure. Right. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> the thing Do with you make custom sneakers as well, because I'm, I have so a the company in Italy that I have been talking to, um, they do make sneakers for sure. But the thing with custom shoes is because they're a one off. And personally, I think if I was incorporating that into Atelier, they'd have to be made in Italy yeah. or Portugal. But most, I would say most likely Italy. Um, 
they're very expensive. It's very expensive to get a one-off shoe. And I just don't know how many people would be interested in spending that kind of money on a shoe. I know I have some clients who would, but I just don't know how big of a business it would be. Maybe we can poll the audience. I don't know. (laughs) Um, But no, I am working on, so with Atelier for the future, I intend on just keeping it what it is. I will never ever sell that company or pawn it off onto somebody or even like I even have a hard time hiring somebody to do what I do because it's just so technical and yeah I just I love it it's like a child to me um with made I intend on growing that maybe eventually one day selling it um and then with ensemble like that's just that's mine like that's me I don't think you can if somebody's referred to a person for personal styling I think it's very difficult to have two of me (laughs) or like you know like another person who could do it yeah um I am working on another business though right now oh under wraps (laughs) it's it's in the baby baby phase yeah um it's very very new but I I don't know about you but I I'm so stressed out about plastic. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that one of huge, the biggest. Yeah, yeah. Huge right now. yeah, like I stay up at night stressing about plastic in the ocean. Like yeah. it, yeah. I can't handle how much plastic we use. Yeah. And I feel like I need to do something that in a small way can help eliminate plastic. So that's my next, it's still in the fashion world, but it will incorporate recycled plastic. Yeah, and I mean, social media isn't helping with that too because you see oh, you see all, all the of images. these images, oh, these videos of just yeah, you know, oceans filled with Ugh. with with all these plastics, and it's definitely a problem. Um, yeah, we'll talk a, li- a little bit more about this offline because uh, yeah, I have some. You have, have some, some ideas video. too. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, let's do it. Clean those oceans. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're just under an hour. If you can, wow, I think that kind of flew by. Yes, it did. Um, was there anything? I don't want to take up too much of your time, but um, was there anything that you? Is there anything big that's happening in 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 your world that you wanted to talk about, or is there? Um, I mean, I I I guess I have talked about myself for the past hour, but I really don't like. Talking about myself. <laughs> um, no, I I don't think that there's anything that is, like, super exciting. Obviously, there's always things happening. Sure. Yeah. Like, Made is in a couple magazines, a couple more coming up. Um, I saw that. That Actually, I think you posted that. Yeah. A, like, it was Avenue? Yeah, magazine? on the cover of Avenue right now, which is cool. How did that feel? Good. And it was actually a surprise, like, a total surprise. Oh, really? Yeah, I found out the day that it came out that it was on the cover I knew they pulled a couple of my dresses and there was a possibility that they would be used in the editorial which is like inside the magazine um so obviously I knew Avenue had my dresses but I had no idea it would be on the cover so that was pretty cool um and I don't know like Atelier is just gonna there's nothing crazy planned for that company in 2020. I get so, so busy with wedding season that I tend to take this time to just prepare for that. When does, when does that begin? Um, well, it's, it's already, it has already begun for sure. I'm getting a lot of inquiries right now. People, you know, recently got engaged over the holidays or whatever, and they're starting the planning process right now is a little bit too early I would say for summer weddings to get measured just because if you measure too early bodies change bodies change (laughs) and then I have to do a lot of alterations yeah Um, resolutioners yes exactly yeah Yeah, so I typically don't start doing the actual cutting of the fabric until like three four months out from the wedding but I'm doing a lot of consults right now and then the actual like ramp up most weddings I would say are in June, July, and August. 
July and August being the most busy. Um, so that kind of starts around April, right. May. I get quite busy end of March, April, that kind of time. Yeah, that makes sense. For, right in time for summer. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, was there any other anything else on your mind? Cool. Uh, no. I, th- I mean, there's always more things that you can we oh, can we always can ask and dive day. into. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But we'll save some for part two. <laughs> well. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you. You, you didn't have yeah. to come here. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. of course. I appreciate I love you. Coming Do you got social handles guys. or websites? The oh, yeah. URLs? Um, atelier is www.atelierbyensemble.com. I know those are both French words, and some <laughs> people don't know how to spell them, but um, A T E L I E R is atelier. <laughs> and then Instagram is at Atelier by Ensemble, and my personal styling is EnsembleCalgary.com, and then Made is We Are Made, M A I D E.com. And I'll post all of these in the descriptions of all of these just in case somebody wanted to, to get in contact with you. Thank you. But again, thank you for coming. Thank um, you for having me. I appreciate it. Shout out to anyone that's listening to the podcast or watching us on YouTube. Uh, it means the world for us, uh, to us, that you guys are supporting. Like I said at the very beginning, the support for the first episode was was incredible, and we have a lot of really cool things planned. The plan is still right now to release an episode every other week, but if we keep getting amazing interviews like Lauren, who knows? <laughs> who knows if we just start <laughs> releasing one a week? Um, like she said, make sure you check out um, Lauren uh, at Atelier by Ensemble. Uh, her website, and yeah, reach out to her if you have any um, personal styling if or men's suiting. If needs. you want to look good, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I personally, I've gone to her a bunch yeah. uh, over the has. past <laughs> over the past yeah. few years. So she's helped me a ton, um, and I always recommend all my friends to go to her. So he even came on TV with me once. I did. Remember? Oh yeah, I, I made him I come at like six a.m. Five thirty. Yeah, it, yeah. it was early. It was early. It was a long time ago too. So like that early. Now that's like when my son wakes up. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, eh. Whatever. But then it felt early. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Well, thank you for listening. Make sure you follow us on our so- socials at Cash Convos, K A J Convos, C O N V O S. Uh, my name is Adrian. My name is Cole. And that is Lauren Larson. And remember, always keep it cash. Keep it cash. Later. Thank you. Sweet. Thank you guys. That was fun. That was awesome.